historian and there's certain rules to my craft. I cannot say anything unless I have evidence. I can't write things unless I have footnotes. So I cannot imagine dialogue. I cannot imagine what people are thinking inside of their heads. But the whole reason I reached out to Emily Mann and the McCarter Theater is because I wanted to work with playwrights who have different rules for their craft. They can imagine. Get inside of people's heads and to help contemporary audiences really feel and imagine what the experience of these people was. I've been blessed with eternal salvation. Fortunately or unfortunately, this statue of myself remains, but it is only a dim shadow of my true reality. Well, that's a good thing, because I'm about to torch your ass. <laughs> In what sense? Jasmine puts on a fireproof vest, gloves, and a welding mask. She lights the torch and approaches Witherspoon. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Just give me one reason why I should. An action of consequence should not be made in haste. When I think about race in America, I think a lot of the thing that we're working through as a country revolves around questions of identity and like how do we identify with our past and what do we remember and why and how uh, and what is our personal sense of, of this history. So I think the statue offered a very concrete uh, no pun intended, <laughs> a very concrete way to to enter that, you know, like the past and the present colliding. Then I try to fill in the blanks with that little bit of information that I you have. You will not put a stain on my name! You will not call into question the sanctity of my marriage! Seems like I struck a bit of a nerve. Not only, Miss Lewis, should you thank God that you have the privilege of attending this great university, you must thank the Lord in heaven that you were born in your own day and not mine. Because while I was always a gentle and upright man, there were others in my circle who were not so kind and merciful. And sooner or later, a proud, intelligent, young gem like you would come across such a man, and a private lesson in humility would follow. I'm sorry. You angered me, I'm sorry. If you're really sorry, keep your pain to yourself. Because, of course, history, as much as we talk about history as being this thing that empirically exists, you know, history is really the present. It's, it's the way that we look at it. It's, it's our, our choice as to what and how to remember and how to tell our own story. So I, I didn't want to get stuck in thinking about Princeton and slavery as being a story about the past. You know, I wanted to make it about the present, but in conversation with the past. And I think the statue kind of allows for that conversation to happen.